airplane travel. All right, so when preparing to fly, this is the very first thing that's giving me anxiety for this trip. <laughs> Make sure to avoid any type of layovers, connecting planes, anything like that, because you know, you'll decrease your chances of having your equipment damaged, left behind, or lost. That doesn't mean with a direct flight, it won't happen either. It can happen. It has happened. My chair got left in Utah, <laughs> um, but I got it back a couple of hours later. Um, so you want to try and purchase your ticket on the cargo loading side of the plane, and it's typically the right side of the plane, unless you're on a smaller one. Um, and this will give you a clear visibility of your wheelchair being loaded and stowed. And you can take this opportunity to record the progress in case of any incident, which I do all the time. Mm -hmm. um, when returning, of course, arrange your transportation about an hour and a half after you, you're scheduled to land. And that goes more for folks who... <coughs> huh? uh, hold on. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, that goes more for power chair users because it takes us longer to get off. Um, and I will add, because I haven't looked at this slide in a while, but one thing I will say is do your best to never get off of a plane unless your chair is at the gate. Mm -hmm. um, especially if there's somebody with, let's say, has a spinal cord injury, high level quad, you need a chest strap, you need to tilt, whatever the case may be. You can't do that in a regular chair, as you obviously know. Um, and they let you on with your chair, you should be able to get off with your chair. It ain't my problem if the flight is running late. That sounds like a personal problem for the airline. Um, so here's a quick example. I don't know if you're gonna see this. Tell me if you guys can see the video. Yeah. You see it? Okay, so this is, they've upgraded a lot. Before it used to just be like a dead man list and five of them would just put it up there and say a prayer. And now they kind of got it, you know, squared out a little bit. So um, I've seen another video where they actually have a ramp to cover this gap. These morons over here didn't do that, but it's better than from the ground to the belt. Oh, well, morons. But usually they put it on that um, cart thing and then bring it to the next spot. Um, all right. Do you bubble wrap the chair? No. Um, okay. So, okay. So, um, I have this seat right here on the right hand of the screen, uh, the seat, this sign, and it's right under my cushion on my seat pan. I try to make it as short as possible, as short as possible make the words I want to stand out. And I have a picture of where um, to put my chair into manual. Uh, yeah, so that these people who put the, ch the chair onto the plane, you know, don't, when they don't know what they're doing, you know, you, they have some simple instructions. My number is actually right here too, which I obviously blotted out because I share this presentation. But um, yeah, so short to the point, highlight what you want to say and stick it on your seat pan. So I think it was Elizabeth earlier who was talking about um, like showering and those sorts of things. This all, like I got very anal about my traveling when I started dating Jose because he had never been on a plane as a person with a disability. And dating me means you have to travel. And uh, I had to make sure that everything went really smoothly. So this way he didn't find a reason not to travel with me going forward. And actually he just went on a trip a couple of days ago for work. Um, so that was pretty cool. But anyway, so here you have the suitcase. And in this suitcase here is this shower chair. And this shower chair comes apart and sorry, all the pieces are here. Um, if you, pack your chair charger, a transfer board, any bowel and bladder supplies. Um, that counts as medical uh, equipment. So it travels for free. Um, and you know how they have like bag fees and all of that? That does not apply when you have medical equipment in your bag. But you must have medical supplies in your bag. TSA does check. And if you do not, they will charge you. I know people who try to get away with it and they've been screwed. Um, 
So service dogs, I don't know if any of you guys travel with service dogs here, but yeah. of course you have to have your ID, your leash, your dog must be vested at all times. I'm not vested, leashed at all times. Um, emotional support animals are not covered under the law. That's a whole different beast. And I try not to get too in depth about service dogs on recorded things because other people come across it and they try to abuse the information that we're given to them. Um, but this is the simple, straightforward facts. If anybody else needs more information about this offline, I'm happy to answer. Oh, and your dog is obviously not allowed in the seats, whether it's empty or not. <clears throat> this is other stuff we travel with. Um, that's the Hoyer lift. We got really lucky and got our hands on a portable one. They usually come with cases, but this one didn't, but we just tie it up really good. That also travels for free. It is a medical piece of equipment, like I mentioned earlier. And of course, a transfer board. Oh, and take out the battery. This one comes with a battery, so you don't want to leave it in there and have it get lost. Um, so preparing to board. Make sure you take video of your wheelchair and or any equipment that is coming onto the plane with you. Have your boarding pass in your hand at the gate and your carpet clearly visible to help prove the condition of your wheelchair or any other equipment before it is stowed. Make sure that you can clearly see a 360 view of your wheelchair or equipment in the video. Um, the carpet and the gate are identifiable markers when you're placing a claim. That has actually helped me in other situations. What is the carpet? The carpet on the floor. The carpet on the ground that you walk on. Right. Yeah. So as long as you can see that, that's very identifiable. They're different in each airport. Okay. Um, so you want to secure your gate claim tag to a spot it cannot easily come off of. I don't know. Can you guys wait? I want to see something. I feel like you guys know this already, but hold on. I'm having a technological problem. Give me one sec. How do I do this? I'm definitely... Oh, screw it. I'm not gonna. Oh, wait, I found it. I found it. I found it. Sorry. Y'all see me, right? Yeah. Okay. So don't put it here. A lot of people automatically want to put it here, but if you put it on your push bar, it can come right off. You want to put it on a spot on the chair where it cannot come off. There's no way it can slide up or down. Um, all right, let's see if the brain can get me back into this. Oh, sugar. Hold on, I'm setting up the challenge. Um, yeah, so make it, put it in a space where it easily can come off. And of course, you want to request an aisle chair if needed to get you from your wheelchair to the aisle chair onto the seat for those of us who can't walk. This is what I do to my joystick. Don't pay attention to my cat hair. Um, this circle here on the picture on the right, not all joysticks are set up this way, but what I do because mine is, and I, and my other chair, it's a little bit further to the back, but I just connect my chair and then I'll put a piece of duct tape here. So it looks connected, but they don't know the difference. And then I don't want them. I'll put the duct tape right here on my armrest. So this way where my mouse is moving, that's why I'm saying right here. So if you see that motion I'm doing with my mouse, I put the duct tape right here. When I get on the plane, I disconnect, put a piece of duct tape here to cover it so they don't try to connect it. And then I cover it with this plastic. This is used for the rain. It's a rain cover for the joystick. Um, but again, I don't want these people driving my chair. I think that is the dumbest thing anybody can do. Um, so you will always be pre-boarded if you need assistance. Um, and you have your stowed items, such as your chair or walker. Um, take off your leg rest, if at all possible, because, you know, center mounts don't, don't, don't come off. Your head rest, absolutely, because that's a first target. Um, your joystick, if possible, or in the very least, disconnect it. Your, and your cushion, and bring them on board with you. Make sure to buckle your seatbelt, because if you don't, it sounds stupid, but if you don't, and then it drags, and then you're either going to damage the seatbelt or it's going to get caught in your wheel or something else and just buckle the damn thing. <laughs> How do um, you disconnect the joystick? Like in the picture that I was showing before, right there? I have no idea. There's a little plug, but it's not on every chair. 
it's yeah, not mine is on every chair. It's just okay. not visible if, on it. If it's not right by your joystick, it might be on the underside in between the, the battery and the seat. You definitely yeah. have one though. I have one on, wait, no, not both sides. I have one. Yeah, mine's yeah. underneath the seat. Yeah, and you just disconnect that. Yeah. I mean, that's like a, well, go ahead. <laughs> good, good. No, go ahead. There was a, she has a great point because there was a time that I disconnected it. I put it in manual, everything. I didn't wrap it the way that she did though. And they pushed it going away. When I returned, I got to my whatever destination, there was some little girl joy riding my fucking chair, like in power mode to me. And I was furious. So what Jessica's saying is absolutely sound. Yep. Bring two pieces of duct tape. <laughs> so that way, you know, you have it for going and coming, but I just tape it on my armrest. Um, Yeah. So they don't see it and think that they're fucking mechanics. Any, oops, sorry, I crossed my bed. Um, okay, so this is Jose's chair. So he has the center mount leg rest, so they don't come off, but there's a lot of play, as we all know, in the back of it. So in order to not, if let's say it's underneath and the plane has turbulence and it shifts and it moves because they're not secured underneath, they shift, they move, they slide, and they land into something which will put weight on that center mount and push it back and potentially break it, right? So we put a yoga block behind there with a piece of Velcro. So we have the Velcro onto his physical chair, Velcro onto the block, and then put it behind. And then I think we secured it with a bungee, if I'm not mistaken. So this way, if something were to hit the front, there's no flex, no play, and it won't break the center mount. And as you could probably see here, not great though. Um, there's that carbonated drink, I'm sorry. Uh, he has the picture right here on his seat pan as well. Um, this is what I was saying earlier. I guess I did. Uh, never get off the plane unless your chair is outside of the door of the plane waiting for you. They try to get you off because they want to keep going, keep going, keep. No, no, don't do it. it. Sounds like a personal problem. They can continue to clean the plane until you get your chair. I, I think that's one of, another bad move to do. Don't do it. Um, make sure you check your wheelchair for any damages uh, before leaving the gate. Once you leave that airport, I don't care if you roll out the door and your front wheels are out and your back wheels are in, it no longer counts. They say you've left the airport. They no longer are responsible. Your claim is not valid. They are, that's it, you're screwed. You get off that plane and you look at every piece of nook and cranny, you take pictures, you take video and make sure and then out, and if it's four in the morning, tough tip, suck it up and go to the claim. You have to do it. It's not like, oh, I'll call in the morning. No, you have to do it there so that they can document it. Um, so extra tidbit, red cap service, right? Red cap pronunciation. Uh, it's provided to you to help you to get you through security, you know, to help you push or carry bags. You know, it's typically custom to give a few bucks, whatever your heart desire. A lot of the times they say, no, 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 no. But I put it in their little pocket, you know, no big deal. Especially if they're really helpful. Um, an, aisle chair, an aisle chair is available during longer flights to get to the bathroom. However, if you're not ambulatory, ambulatory, this can still be a challenge for anyone who needs any type of close transferring, such as myself, um, because they're small, you know. And um, some air... Aircraft bathroom doors um, are able to be removed to give you a little bit more space. And the flight attendants in the past have held up a piece of drapery or something to give me some type of modesty, but don't fart because everybody can hear it. <laughs> um, so preparing for your destination, right? This is actually me in Canada. I told over Toronto. I, I um, should have. Uh, yeah. So the hotel, I think Elizabeth was talking about this. So while scouting out accessibility features, it can be helpful to contact the hotel staff and explain your physical needs in advance. Um, you, you can request pictures of the potential room and have them emailed to you. You know, you can always speak to a manager there, explain, hey, I'm a person with a physical disability, my needs are X, Y, and Z. I need to make sure that in order to stay at your hotel, my needs are met to the best of the ability. Um, I did this to Puerto Rico. Like I took 110, they took 110 pictures 
and were so awesome and did that for us. Um, something to look for when using a Hoya lift is to make sure that the hotel bed isn't um, one of those boxed frame that's solid because then the legs don't go underneath. We learned that on the heart. I, I have a question. I have an answer. So have you confronted a, a hotel where they have box frames in one room, but then don't in another, or you just have to choose another hotel? So what we ended up making it work. So what we did was instead of transferring at the middle of the bed, we transferred at the end of the bed. And cause the legs open wide. So you get right at that corner and push that mofo in and then slide, you know, pull up with the rest of the bed. Made it work. Okay. I didn't want that to be, this was our first trip and I didn't want him to, I want to get home. I didn't want that to happen. Um, so something to look for when you do, okay, I said that already. Uh, for long stays, you can request to have furniture removed, such as coffee tables, extra chairs. It can give you, you know, more room around the room to get around. And especially like me and Jose, two wheelchairs, two whole, uh, two wheels, one whole lift, that shower, it's just a lot. So the less furniture, the better. Um, this is actually that box frame. You can't really tell in the photo, which is why we got fooled because it has like that little skirt around the box of the thing. Um, but it still worked. We were still able to make it, um, do it. Uh, so research on transportation. Secure and do research for accessible travel, period. Make yourself crazy, do as much as you can. I'm, I hate the phone, but I'm always on the phone to make sure that everything goes I take names, I write down the time and the date of the person that I spoke to because somebody is gonna be held accountable. Um, something a lot of people don't know is that Accessoride, if you have it here in New York, it can be transferred to other states that offer a form of paratransit services and you can use it on a guest pass. The one thing you have to keep in mind is that here in New York City, we have a 24 hour Accessoride service because our subway and buses offer 24 hour service. Other states don't have that. So you want to get to the glove, you better figure it out. Um, I have used the paratransit in places like Boston and Miami and Albany and a couple of different places on a guest pass. Guest pass. So you would search paratransit in Miami, that information would pop up. You would call Accessor right here, tell them you're going to Miami, you would like to have a guest pass. They'll fax the information to Miami and then Miami will contact you. It's fairly easy. Um, so all buses in the US are accessible, but service and availability differs from state to state. Well, the first time we went to Puerto Rico, we took the bus and it was great because it was accessible, but it was for like every two hours. So it was kind of like meh, meh, but we made it work and it was fine. Um, Toronto and Canada, Toronto, um, and Washington DC have extremely accessible and relatively easy to navigate subways. Uh, Natalia, did you use that? Yep, I agree. I think DC is top. Oh yeah. And Toronto is next and the streetcars are accessible. So that's, I, I like that. Oh yeah, it was great, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so this bus here that we used, we used to get from the airport to the hotel. And this just so happens to be because Puerto Rico is a port place, port territory where the cruise ships come in, they had an accessible shuttle. So we utilized their service and they held two wheelchairs and our luggage and the money left just fine. And I think it was like 60 bucks each way, it wasn't a big deal. And um, it was great. That's what we used to, and also to get back to the airport. Um, and, you know, if you need to be shuffed around, shuffled or shuttled around through different places, you could use them for that too, you know, but that can add up. So if you can rent a car, I suggest do that. But this time that we went, I, I wasn't driving yet. So now I'm a rental car. Um, some extra stuff. If you don't have um, access to travel equipment, such as the Hoyer lift, because that's not, that's, we're blessed to have that. We know that. Um, consider reaching out to a local disability organization or look for a med medical supply store who you can rent from. Um, when we went to Puerto Rico, we reached out to the chapter, United Spinal Chapter in Puerto Rico, and they were helpful for certain things too. Um, so that's definitely a good resource. Um, we all hope that nothing happens, but it doesn't um, hurt to do research for local repair places in the area that you're stay staying at in case of a hiccup happens. I, I say do that extra step 
And hopefully that means nothing will happen. It's if you don't do it, something will happen. <laughs> I'm superstitious though. Um, if you forget travel equipment or accessories, uh, you can also try to contact uh, one of those local organizations or medical suppliers. Um, and if available, you can have stuff overnight to you uh, to save your trip. We actually learned that too because we brought the whole list and forgot the sling. So now we have two slings, one we keep in the bag um, so that doesn't happen again. Cruise. So when preparing to sail, um, the Depending on your own personal insurance and its restrictions, you may want to consider getting traveler's insurance in case a medical emergency does arise. Um, reach out to the Cruise Lines Accessibility Service Department. They can answer questions about the room, and you'll need to fill out a specific documentation to secure the ADA room um, because they want to make sure that a person with a disability is, in fact, utilizing that room. Um, inquire about amenities on the ship. You'll want to know if the pool lift works, if any amenities need accommodations, because once I RSVP'd for an escape room. And when I went, they informed me that I needed to use one of their manual wheelchairs and a stair lift. But I wasn't informed of that when I scheduled it, and therefore I was forced to reschedule um, doing the escape room, which ended up being a pain for me because I was in a, a big chair. I couldn't self-propel. Everybody else is running around the room for clues and I was just sitting there. So it just, it didn't work out for me. And had I known that, I just wouldn't have done it. Luckily, I didn't pay for it. It was a part of it. Um, so if you're physically unable to use a manual wheelchair, avoid ships that need to tender. That is what Tiffany was talking about. Tender is when the ship is too big and it can't port at the island directly, requiring a smaller boat that cannot accommodate a power wheelchair. So, uh, to bring you to the visiting islands. Um, what we ended up doing this trip was renting manual wheelchairs, just in case for whatever reason. Um, so you see these, uh, the, the bathroom was, you know, it wasn't huge by any means, but it was doable completely. And I do not like these wall things at all, at all, at all, at all. My legs don't touch the ground. I don't have any stability. I, I have my ex who could walk Used to, when we when when, blah, blah, when we could encounter when we would encounter those things, he would sit on it and lift his legs up, and we have had times where the thing just whoop, fell down. Hell he, he, no! So I don't do it, especially with my disability. I can't afford that to happen, especially in the middle of the ocean. Um, so although handrails and a shower bench is provided, I prefer to use a more sturdy waterproof chair while using the shower. So I found that I can't remember if it was in the room or I stole it from somewhere off the ship. Um, <laughs> but be mindful, be mindful not to damage anything. Obviously you don't lose anything that would get ruined by water. Um, but, or obviously, you know, you would be responsible for any damages. So here are some accessible excursions, right? The wheelchair escapes who someone mentioned earlier and they didn't mention this one exactly, but versions of these. And I, I don't like them personally, they are not people with disabilities who are running them. In most cases, there are someone who knows someone and they have a very narrow scope of disability. And therefore, to me, doesn't make them qualified. They know the minimum of accessibility. So it might discourage somebody from doing it, although it does help give you a gauge, right? Ultimately, you're the one who can make the decision for yourself. Um, so utilize the accessibility service departments too, because they help let you know with that. Um, US owned islands tend to offer decent accessibility while other countries do not. Um, but tipping goes a long way and the local staff are eager to uh, assist. Uh, man, when I went to Haiti, I was like a queen with $50. They just carried me everywhere. It was amazing all day long. I didn't have to worry about a thing. Um, you would have thought like I was Beyonce, like it was crazy. Um, service dogs. So service dogs are allowed on ships. I don't because it's too hot. Like that equator heat will kill you, you know? So like, I just don't like it. Um, but you can bring it, bring your dog. Um, you're not allowed to leave your dog in the ship or the room at all whatsoever. And you must remember that the ADA only applies in the United States. 
You will need documentation from a veterinarian and each country's port, which you pay for, which I did do last year or the year before, and I just never took her. Um, ports that are owned by the, I said airline here, but I meant cruise. Um, so ports that are owned by the cruise are considered US territory. So the dog can get on without any documentation, any worries, any worries. So like Coco Cay is Royal Caribbean Island. Um, so she could just get off the boat without a problem. They do have, because like I said, <laughs> I did um, everything for her. They did have a place for her to go back, which I thought was very kind. Um, and that's on the physical ship. Um, and that would be the relief area for your pet. Not pet, I'm sorry, service animal. Uh, bring a power strip. There's only like two outlets in the whole room. I'm like, what do you mean? It is so annoying. Um, very limited. Um, so if you need your wheelchair charge, a CPAP, a nebulizer, your phone, it can be challenged like all day. We're like, okay, this, this, switch, this, this, it was a pain. Um, be mindful of allergies. Parties on the ship may release latex balloons. I remember the first day I'm going through and I'm like, oh, this is so pretty. And I just so happened to look up and there was a net full of latex balloons. And I asked them and I was like, bro, what, what, what is this? And they said, oh, the welcome party, da, da, they released them. And I'm like, oh, no. so you planned on killing me. That's cool. Like, what? Um, so luckily, I, I couldn't attend the party. Um, so yeah, make sure you look up and check for all of the allergies, report all of the allergies. They can't guarantee everything, but at least it's dead. Uh, bring walkie-talkies because there's limited service, right? Um, Using them on the ship can make it easier to contact people in your group, you know, if you need it. Um, tipping in other countries, like I said before, can go a long way. If you need assistance on the beach or to transfer, it helps. Um, alternative, oh, I'm at the end. How did I get there so fast? I'm talking so fast. Um, alternative travel, Amtrak, use Red Cap. They're amazing. Um, they're, they're also, they're pushy with the tip, but I, they're, they're nice, so I give it to them. Um, Notify always when traveling with a service dog. They've gotten really strange, like there's documentation required now. Um, and accessible restrooms are available. So make sure that you're putting a car with one if you need one, because it's not easy to get out of the car, get a ramp, go back out, get into the other one and all that jazz. Um, Greyhound, my least favorite form of travel. You have to contact at least 24 hours in advance. Um, if your ride requires anything connecting with a non-Greyhound bus, you gotta contact that carrier too at least 48 hours before traveling to make sure the connecting bus is accessible. Megabus bonus is free. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it's not free. It's like a dollar or $5. PCA's rides are free. Um, and when you do the online form, select mobility unit when purchasing your ticket. The end. <laughs> I think that's the fastest I've ever done this. All right. And Answers. Question. I have a question first. Um, did you just say that the mega bus was free for your PCA? Okay. Okay. All right. I definitely I get a whole down there, so I was like, it better not have been free. <laughs> okay, got it. Questions, lady. Do I need to unmute her? Or can people unmute themselves? You guys can unmute yourselves, right? Yeah, right. Well, we can. Jessica, that was awesome, by the way. I don't have a question, but that was really interesting. There's a lot of information there. I know it's so much, and I'm still learning, too, please. Like I said, my anxiety is very real for this upcoming trip. I mean, but, but the connecting flight is the same process as getting on the initial flight. You just do it again. Mm -mm. Oh, hold on, I have a delivery. I, but I want to comment on that. Oh, they, they try to hold on to your equipment or something? I don't know how that works. I never I never get a connecting flight. I, I just don't even want to take the risk if something goes wrong. So that's good. The that's other problem, connecting flights is the, the first flight is late. Yeah, you're going to miss that connection. And then that's its own hassle. Yeah, I'll pay the extra money to just get a direct flight. I don't... I, yep. mm -mm. It is, it's stressful, but I didn't pay for my flights. I use my points. And this is the first time this has ever happened to me. And right now, when I looked up the tickets, when they changed my flight, it 
it's almost at a thousand dollars one way. So it's expensive uh, because it's, um, what's this week? Spring break week. So the prices are jacked and then it's Easter and all these different things. So it's really bad. That's the only reason. So my worry is my, I land at my first destination at 2.30. I land, and this is if there's no delays, right? I land at 2.30 and my next slot, my next flight takes off at 3.30. Mm. That's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> so so you only have like an hour. Less than an hour because we get oh on the so last ones off. And mm. I already approached this to Southwest. I sent them a uh, certified email, a uh, certified letter, um, and a signature. And I was like, know that I'm going to own Southwest if anything goes wrong. Because I did my due diligence. I'm flying in the day before to avoid any hiccups. And that was before. Um, but it, I can't even use a restroom, right? So I get on the plane at 12 o'clock. I land at 2.30, I, I, I won't have time to get my wheelchair. So I would have to get on one of their stupid chairs. Thank God I'm not with OJ um, to go to the next flight. I'm not gonna be able to use the bathroom that entire time. And then I land at seven o'clock. I won't have the ability to use the restroom the entire time. Are you familiar with the airport that you'll be at? Like, have you been there before? Which airport is it? In Orlando. I don't know. So. Well, maybe maybe you can have some time, even though you're going to be in the uncomfortable airport chair between there and getting on the next flight. I don't think so. So the flight takes off at 3.30. So they'll probably be boarding about 2.45. So we land at 2.30. Everybody else deboards. You're looking at 3 o'clock. Jessica, get sorry to cut you off. Um, let me ask you a question. The wheelchair that you that they they're gonna put you in, in at the airport is that the little tiny one? No, 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 no. They put you in a the little tiny one is just to get you to your feet. Oh, okay, okay. Because they pull me on that one. But that's just to get into the plane. The little yeah, house. yeah. And then when they take you out, if you have to stay in one of those, they'll transfer you to like one of their like hospital manual chairs, like mm. yeah, dinosaur chairs. But and they're not uh, comfortable. Yes, they're very, my, oh my God, Jessica, wh when you're, when you're doing this connecting thing, you know, if you explain the situation and let them know you need to use the restroom, they can not hold the flight for you, but know that you're hold the flight for you. It happens for me just to have them inform the next flight. Cause what's your other option? You definitely can't do it on the plane. Well, a worst case scenario, I'll leave, leave my chuchi right over the side of the seat and piss in the middle of the aisle. I ain't got no damn shame in my hand. <laughs> I hear you. I'm right there with you, girl. We'd be pissing on the plane together. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And what else? You should have had it ready for me. You should know better than that. <laughs> and it's very they don't realize like I said all of that in my letter it was like you guys don't realize it's a basic basic human right to use the restroom yeah. and now you're telling me I can't do that because of a connecting flight so you now turned a three hour travel time three and a half hour travel time from 12 all the way up until 7 p.m nonsense mm -hmm. but anyway that doesn't mean don't travel 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 it's fun this is the only time in my years of traveling this has ever happened to me Okay. Mm. I've done connecting flights and there's nothing and the first time I traveled by myself, you know, while being in a chair and um oh my god, I didn't know what the hell I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing when I booked those that flight. I was like I'll never do it again. It's annoying. It's uncomfortable. It's just um I guess uncomfortable cuz you know you have to Freaking um, get in and out of, of those little aisle chairs, and then my my I don't travel. Well, I didn't have the electric chair; I just got it. But then my manual chair, you got to put it back together, and oh god, it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I feel like um, Jessica, I, de la Rosa. 
I feel like I need your help writing this strongly worded letter about what happened to me on this way because I just I don't I'm not good at that part and I I I should I feel like I should be having that whole flight covered what happened to you did I miss it oh I spoke about it at the beginning well, um, when I was trying to fly out to Toronto from LaGuardia, they booked a small jet and I shared it. Oh, 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 oh. I did. They had to change that and that was fine. But coming back, they're the ones that booked this trip and booked the return. And I had to change airports to go to Toronto to fly out because they said that's the only place they have air buses, not out of Buffalo. And then they did the same thing again. When you made the trip, you let them know that you're a person with a disability, right? Yeah. And I have airline? a confirmation email from there that says it completely. And what airline? I booked with Delta, but they had to change it to Air Canada after this thing happened. So I'm kind of unclear. I think it's Air Canada. Well, I don't that I'm unclear on who I need to reach out to. Oh, to. It's the original person. Delta. Yeah. yeah. And Delta, I've always been told it's the worst as a person. I've never flown Delta and I'm never gonna, I knew it. I am a jet blue junkie and whenever I got to go weird places you know whatever but I I, I I I knew Delta was bad and I did it anyway and but you I'm, know what too that when I had my chair so the first time I had my chair damaged was Delta and when they lost it in Utah Delta so it was at each at everything happened with Delta they're terrible with chairs I'm not doing it again but I, I, and they didn't offer you any uh refunds or anything Mm, they said to email um this certain place and me and my friend are trying to put together the email the only thing they did was accommodate us in a hotel because they had it happened three times in one day jessica that they said okay you can take this flight get there it's a jet. okay you can take this flight uh get there it's a jet and then it didn't work again in that night they put us up in a hotel and the next morning we were able to fly out but something has to happen and, and, and the customer service uh, Canadians are not as nice as they say I don't get it I don't know but yeah that's one of the first things that I've researched you know and in, in my plans for traveling the airline you know what are the statistics what does their customer service look like um in May I'll be flying out in Alaska and I think they're they're pretty good pretty decent about things so and what, did you find in your research? what did you find in your research about the airlines? I, in my research, American Airlines is pretty good. Um, Alaska, uh, Delta is like at the bottom of the barrel. Um, there's the third one. Brain fry, can't remember right now, but there was like three, three airlines that were pretty decent about you know, wheelchairs and disabilities and that kind of thing. So, so for me, this may, it was between, I booked it in American Airlines. However, they contract with Alaska. So I'm like, okay, folks, when I called them, I said, which one am I flying? And they said, no, you booked with us, but you're flying out in Alaska. And I said, okay, that's fine. Right, right. Okay. So. I would, I would suggest to you when you write that letter, you make sure you want them. So when they left my chair in Utah, <laughs> when I remember when we landed, everybody got off the plane. It was me and another friend there who's power trade user, both of us. And when we landed, five people, after everybody got off, five staff came on. And I was like, well, I'm not pushing drugs. So I know they're not here to arrest me. Um, so something must have happened in my chair. Why are these people here? And I had a heart attack. And they came up to me and as soon as they said, oh, Miss Delarosa, we're so sorry for the inconvenience. But I like my ears like, ee! like I could, I was so mad. And I'm, I have a horrible temper, horrible, horrible. So I remember when they finally got me in a manual wheelchair and they're still talking to me and blah, 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 blah. All I know is that I got my chair hand delivered to me by Delta. Mm -hmm. Hand delivered to me, the, maybe about four hours later, five top. And I, I was like, I don't, I don't want a nice little gift card that says I can fly with, you know, with a four hundred dollar credit. I will never fly you again. And they ended up reimbursing me and the other girl full flight going and coming. So I, we flew for free. <laughs> so you told where, So where did they find your chair? They left it in Utah. Oh. 
It was Tatiana. Ta ta what's her name? Taisha? Tatiana. Tatiana. Yeah. Where she were you flying, flying to? To you back from Utah back home. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I understand that. Yeah. My, only my only experience with Delta, um, I remember one time the chair broke. I don't know if it was the back piece, something happened to it. And they actually, they were pretty good. They sent someone to come and fix it for me. They were pretty good about it. Huh. I'm curious how Evelyn is feeling. <laughs> I, am, I am feeling very stressed out after this whole presentation. Are you kidding? No, I am. I Look, am. I, 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 this, the, all of this is making me exceedingly nervous. I think I'm at home. Evelyn, 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 listen, I think, the, yeah. but I think the takeaway, the takeaway is even though all of the bad things that have happened, the people that are speaking about it are talking about all the trips we take. So it hasn't deterred us is what I'm saying. You, you I know every time and, and it's only happened. So many things happen because we've taken so many chances and been so many places and, and seen so many things. Uh, and like, I used to go traveling every year and I have events and a power chair and we used to still do it all the time. Yeah. She has an event, she has an event and she travels. You ain't got uh, no yeah, Evelyn. That's we a lot. We the section machine right in front of me. That's I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm listening to all of this and it sounds like a, yeah. total nightmares to me and no. i i just you know what uh, i think you know what I i'm think? not feeling reassured evelyn listen this is what i think you should do like i was taking a couple of little notes during the presentation this is what i think you should do sometimes when you audio when you hear things it puts everything in a rinse cycle and your anxiety goes out the door right um, what i think what you should do is just make a couple notes, some bullet points, the things you found to be most important, you know, wrap the joystick, uh, you know, call ahead of time, things like that. Just make your own little list of things that are, pertain to you. As you do your research, I can send you this presentation. I can send you my list. You can look things up and, and don't go crazy looking things up either because you'll draw yourself nuts. But the point I'm making is I think that you should just make a little list. And then when you see it on paper, it puts things in perspective. You're like, okay, I just need to check this off, check this off. And check this. But when all this other stuff is in your head, you're not going to be in a zone to be. Yeah. Able. I mean, it's a lot of presentation and a lot of words yeah. and a lot of stuff, you know, that seems to go wrong. And um, my tolerance is so low for things going wrong. And if I travel with my husband, I don't think he's very tolerant either. And I'm, a, I'm just scared. I'm, I'm scared to, I have to figure out how the chair comes apart. I don't know who's gonna figure that out. I mean, Wait, certainly hold on, not. Hold on, quick thing about that. If you're traveling in a power chair, not many yeah. things should be coming apart. Remember what I said is the headrest. There's, there's nothing. Right, the headrest. I know. I know how That's the headrest it. comes off. Joystick is a wire. That's it. And even if the I wire don't see how the joystick is a wire, and that's because I think yours isn't at the joystick, like we said before. I think yours mine. might be like mine, that is between the seat and the battery, like down by the wheel. I don't know. It's a quantum edge or something. You're gonna see it. Any ask anyone around you to look for a plug. That I have the same one you have. It's like under the seat, into the blue casing the under our seat. Picture. I mean, well, my chair is blue. I'm not, but uh -huh. it's like underneath. I have the same quantum. It, it's underneath the seat. Well, that's where our battery is. So it's the wire goes to the back of your seat or under it. Okay. Uh, but also, you know, I have, yeah, that's not important. Like, I've traveled exactly. so many times without that. You know what? The next yeah. thing you would do is you would put it in mode where it's in tilt and recline and all that, and then turn it off. 
So this way, most of those people don't know how to change the mode and they still won't be able to drive the chair. Yes. So you would yeah. put it in, you would put it in tilt and recline? I yeah. don't mean physically tilt and recline the chair. What I'm saying is press the button that would navigate you into that feature to tilt and recline. And so that way you're not driving the chair. It would just you don't have to wait a minute. Buttons to tilt them I don't understand what you I don't understand. I mean, I have those buttons that tilt and recline and elevate and blah blah. Um, Jessica might, oh my God, Tambor might be better to tell you this, but for me, cause she has a quantum, but me, I have those buttons that you're speaking about with the tilt and recline, but right under the screen, there's a button that says mode. And there's one that says profile. Are you seeing oh, that? Wait a minute. I'm looking. All right. Um, I see auxiliary Bluetooth settings and system information. When I go to look at the different things on my Joyce on my screen. No, they're physical buttons on the joystick, not on. No, the I do not. Oh, I see. I see a line, home, then what looks like a butt, you know, uh, like a trumpet, and two lines. That the trumpet's the horn. The trumpet is a horn. Yeah. Okay, and the home is. Oh, I see. The home has a wheelchair symbol a round thing and then two other things on it does your chair tilt yes so however you get it into tilt is what jessica's talking about what mode do you use i you well i have i have a little box that says tilt recline elevate and let you go yeah so that's the mode she's saying you can put it in just go onto that screen and then you'll be in the screen that Jessica's talking about. There's no, I don't see where that screen is because it's a physical, it's physical. E Evelyn. Yeah. Do you, you have your phone on you? Yeah. Okay. So I'm talking to you on my phone because my iPad stopped working. With okay. The, that's what I was going to say. I took a picture of mine. Okay. Does it look anything like that? Um. No. No, is uh, your, it kind of looks like that. Is yours completely digital? Do you have any physical buttons? I do. I have. I think he I has have, the big screen. I have the big tilt, touch screen, right? I yeah. have. I don't have a touch. I have tilt, recline, elevate, and legs. Those are physical yeah. buttons on mine. Show us it. Take your phone. Yeah. Turn on the camera and flip the screen. She's on okay. the phone now. Can you get? Oh, wait a minute. No, I can take. I think I can take up. But you got to turn on your camera for us to see because right now your camera. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Um. Okay. Okay. Can you see it? No, your screen is off on Zoom. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here we go. Can you see that now? No. Oh, your screen is off on Zoom. You have to turn, go okay. into Zoom, turn on your camera, and then we'll be able to- Wait a minute, you're, 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 hold on one second. Just in case you don't know, you muted yourself. So now we don't hear or see. <laughs> okay, hold on. I thought you were on, are you, oh, she's, you're muted again, Evelyn. I'm, I'm confused. Is she on her iPad or on the phone? I'm on my, no, I'm on the phone because my iPad stopped working. Yeah, you could still show. You just got to turn on your camera on Zoom. All right, hold on. I can't, all right, wait a minute. Okay, here's my camera. Okay, can you see the camera? No, ma'am. Not, are we, so we're not trying to see your camera. We need you to turn. I can't. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you trying I to? I can't fucking hear anything. Are you, trying, I'm, are you trying to take the picture on the phone now as you're on this call? Okay. Ole Evelyn? Evelyn? Let's 
Evelyn? Okay, I know I'm on mute. I, I can't. So Evelyn, question, you're on this- My microphone call. is unmuted? Yes, Evelyn, you're on this Zoom call. Okay, am I on it now? Evelyn, are you yeah. on this Zoom call on your cell phone? I, I am. Okay. I see your picture here. What are you using to show us the chair? I was showing you my camera on my cell phone. No. That is not gonna work. Yeah, right. you have to turn on your, right now, since you see us, you need to wear it. No, says, now I can't see you. No, where it says mute and start video, would go back to Zoom where you are seeing me and Natalia, go back there. Now I can't see you at all. That what, you're not in Zoom? Well, you can't see me because my, my camera's off. You see my name though, right? My microphone is unmuted. Okay, can you hear me or no? Yes. yes. Are you okay, back? But I, can't, but I can't see you now. I'm I'm getting really frustrated with all of this. Wait a minute. Does it help now? Because you can see me. No, I can't see you. Are you in, you're not in Zoom anymore? I'm not in Zoom. It doesn't look like I'm in Zoom anymore. And I was and it kicked me out of Zoom on my iPad. I know that on my phone, um, so you still have the application open. And do you know how to double tap or what, I, what it is you need to do to see your other windows that you were just on? Well, I see the, well, I see, yeah, I see the other windows I was on. Okay, so open the Zoom window. Go back to that Zoom window. If you're on the home screen, you won't see us. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but I don't think... If you double tap and you see all your other windows that were open, you can touch on this window. Not on Safari. You're not on Safari, right? No. Okay. So from the home screen, if you double tap, all of the other screens you've been using pop up. Do you see that? No. No. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting really frustrated with all of this. That's understandable. That's understandable. I'm really just, I'm just getting too frustrated with all of this. And for some reason, I mean, I see, I see you on Zoom. So if you see her, that's where you want to be now. So at the bottom where it says mute, it should say start video right next to it and press start video. I see no, it just says safe driving mode, done speaking. That's all it says. Oh, fuck. That again. No, I, I know where you are. Um, swipe to the right. Swipe okay. right on your screen and then you're gonna see Natalia on me. Right. Okay. No, I do home. not see. I do not see. I see, yes, I see Natalia now. There you go. Now tap the screen and on the bottom left, your option should come up. I see Zoom, but it still keeps saying microphone is unmuted. Your video is stopped. Yeah, so click on that. Click on start video. Stop video. That one. Okay. All right, now I get nothing. Hey, Natalia, I'm gonna G. -O. I'm getting nothing. I'm, getting, I, I'm right. like <laughs> done with this. Okay. Just. Uh, okay, Jessica, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This was fantastic. I learned a lot. So thank you so much. And you know, you're gonna have to do this again in the future, right? Okay, love you. Yes, yes thank you. Jessica. Have a great trip. Have a great trip. Jessica. Jessica. Enjoy. Okay. Bye. Jessica. Right. Thank Bye. you. And I can always, you know, answer questions. Y'all could always reach out to me and I can help. It really is totally worth doing. It. Yeah, it's that was good. Yeah. I never traveled since I had this accident. So it's good and learning. So what I said, Jose, when we traveled, that was his first time as a person with a disability. Okay. And yeah. now he's like, where are we going next? So yeah. Uh, okay. okay. I know. Okay. You're than me. Okay. Thank you. Can I, wait, wait, can I ask something? Um, since yeah. I sent out the link and you guys registered and you can put it on your calendar to be here, 
remember how we uh, we had the group email when I would send it manually? That means that we're not on that group email now, right? Everyone is just getting it sent from Zoom. Yeah, I'm not getting it at all. I'm not getting it at all. So I I, I think I'm I think I'm, I'm gonna. What the other? He said you have to set it up through Zoom, where Zoom will send out a reminder. So mm -hmm. where you sent those reoccurring meetings in there? Somewhere in there, I'm not Zoom savvy, but somewhere in there, Jose can help you because he, he does it. Yeah, we're nice supposed to talk later. <laughs> yeah, so do it. And he, um, you know, he'll help you with that. And it'll send out a reoccurring, you know, a reminder. Uh, yeah, but I think I'm still going to send the manual thing because we can all connect with each other on that group email. You can't with the Zoom, right? Okay, got it. All right, Jessica, we'll let you go. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm just very frustrated with all of my electronics right now can i show you something that i just took i know you're frustrated but just yeah so you know that this is easy the plug i'm gonna zoom in i'm gonna show it to you like this i can't see you i can't see you on my phone what are you seeing on your screen right now it says it's black and it says done speaking and it says your microphone is unmuted your video is stopped. It says safe driving mode. Where I don't know where the hell yeah, that came so from. You gotta swipe. If you could swipe your whole screen to the right. If you swipe left, it goes into driving mode. But if you swipe right, it comes up with our videos again. Wait, 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 wait. We're, talk we're okay, talking. Okay, now I see you. Driving. There you go. Yeah, she's so got it on her phone. She's got it. There's a drive. Okay, okay. Oh, that doesn't matter. Right. I have yeah. no idea. Oh, yeah, now it, yeah, you got you know, it. it you keeps got it. going on and off. Yeah, because it's, you swipe one way, it goes into driving mode, and the other way comes back. Well, now it's just, okay. Now I see, you know, uh, yeah, I see. You see us? I see you. Okay. Oh, okay. and I see butterflies. Okay. That's us. That's us. All right. That's you. Um, but, uh, you know, can you see this picture? Yes. All right. This, oh, now I'm going to zoom in on it. This is the plug. I can't, I can't see it. I can't. It's uh, just, do I need to speak? Maybe all it's right. a mold. Can you see it now? Yeah, but I can't see where that is. It's on the right side of the chair between right. the seat and the wheel. You're going to find it. Ask anyone to look for that uh, plug that disconnects around the base of the chair. You're going to find it. Okay. So I think in another few weeks, I'm supposed to go to the wheelchair people because I need them to adjust my back. And obviously they can tell me where it is, right? Yeah, of course. And they can um, show you... Um, how to take your headrest off. Oh, my headrest, I know I get, because I get my hair cut, my, my hairstylist takes my headrest off all the time. Okay. And then like uh, Jessica said, the joystick, I like to take off the actual little part on top. I um, mean the rubber part? Yeah, but mine's comes off. Some don't. I Only don't think mine, I don't think mine comes off. Okay. So you unplug what we're talking about, take off the headrest and then wrap the joystick in bubble, bubble wrap and duct tape with the note on it. So that's three things. It's only three things you have to handle for your chair. Right. So I have to, so I should duct tape everywhere where the, also the controls that say tilt, recline, elevate, and yeah, light. Your joystick, the entire joystick. That's the entire joystick. You just bubble okay. wrap it with some duct tape and that's it. You can put the note on there that Jessica did. I think that's a, a fantastic idea. You know, you know what you can do, Evelyn, take advantage of you going to wheelchair clinic. Right. Who are, who are you seeing? I'm going to see the people who do the actual stuff. I'm not going to Sinai. They're sending me to their factory in the Bronx. Oh, oh, uh, HME. Um, yeah, I guess it's, um, on Olmstead. Yeah. It's home medical equipment. So yeah. Take advantage while you're at the wheelchair clinic, explain that you're going to be traveling and right. ask them what they think you should point out. So in you trying to make this note that you're going to tape on it, right. 
ask them, okay, what should I tell them to do to protect the chair? Right. But it's and not- what and what do you do? I mean, so you know, in the middle of the night, I'm turning by myself, which I'm not going to be able to do because then I'd be in a regular bed. I'm in a hospital bed here. So I would have to have my husband turn me. Okay. Can he do this? We're not sleeping in this. We're not sleeping in the same rooms because I'm using the rails of the hospital bed and the, that, and that whatever that lift thing is called on top. Um, you know, that triangle piece. Yeah. The, I can't remember what it's, I can't remember what it's called. Um, so if I go somewhere, I'm not going to have any of that which makes me able to turn and pull myself up and do all that stuff. Um, okay, but are you sharing a room with yours? I'm not now. With your because husband, I'm, you travel, are you staying in the same hotel room with your husband? Yeah, I'm going to have to, I think. Okay, so is, is, are you comfortable with him turning you? I guess I'm going to have to wake him up and turn me and do all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I... I I'm sleeping in an adjustable bed, so I'm not going to have any of that stuff. Okay, I'm in the same situation. There's my hospital bed. When I travel, it's always like a fuller queen bed. Right. I right. travel with someone because I always need an aid. And right. Simply, I always travel with my 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 chucks, the strong chucks. And let me tell you something. The times that I've forgotten the chuck, you can take a sheet and double it up and fold it right. and do that to slide yourself. Have your chucks under you. Oh, I didn't think about that. I should have put all of that medical supplies as luggage. Jessica did a great presentation, people. I'm going right. to try and get it online because it was really fantastic. So uh, what was I saying? The bed. So you can always have the chucks to help slide you from side to side. Have your husband or assistant help right. you on your side. Use the pillows. Get I always get extra pillows to help prop you up on the side that you need to be on. Right. When I- the, when room service comes with breakfast and I need to sit up and eat like a queen, my friends just sit, they actually stand on the bed. So and they sit me up. Somebody stands on right. the bed, pulls me back and I lay on the headrest. Right. So pillows galore. And I'm fine. Right. And fine. you're fine with that. It's okay. It's absolutely fine. Another thing is I know people have um, portable rails. So it's like a little handrail that has like a little, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I've never seen it. Okay, it's a handrail, right? So if this is the, right, it has a little L shape. It's an L shape, and that shoves under the bed. So then you have a, oh. a rib. right. Didn't you? Wasn't there somebody online a couple of weeks ago who lived in San Jose, California? Um. San Jose, yes. no. Um, she said she lived in San Jose. Ah, uh, well, I don't remember. I, I think Alyssa lives in California. Um, why? Because I'm go- that's where I was thinking of going. Oh. Where my grandson is. And she had mentioned that if I needed anything to just let her know, but I don't know who she was because I don't have a list of everybody. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to put together the mailing list again right after this. Add okay. you to it, and everyone will be able to communicate with everyone. And okay. in the upcoming week, I am going to try to also send out the list of all of the resources and Jessica's presentation. Right. I mean, I, I you know, I think I might need more stuff when I get there just as, you know, like, if I'm in a power chair, I'm gonna need a, a, you know, a car with a lift, like I get here in New York. Well, not are you, you know, mean- I have the, I have the ramp. You know, I go in the taxis with the ramps. Yeah, well, you can rent those same kinds of cars in the city that you're going to. You can. Absolutely, every city okay. they have um, accessible uh, w- wheelchair accessible vans available for rent. Absolutely, without. Right. Okay. Totally. Yeah. All right. We'll keep talking about this. You have us at your, I know Evelyn, and that's, you know, you got to take, I know. I, I would like to be brave enough to do this and, you know, you are, you are brave, brave enough. You are brave enough. If you're talking about it and you're trying to prepare yourself for it, that means that you're brave enough and you're open to it and you're going to be able to do it. Okay. All we, right. Yeah.
Okay, I'll wait for your list and I'll get in touch with the person in San Jose. Right now. Okay, right. thanks, Natalia. Next week. Thank okay. you everybody for coming. Mwah, 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 mwah. Okay. Email now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye, okay. baby. Bye. 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 Bye.